Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. These were the overnight minimum temperatures and they were recorded during the early portion of the overnight as winds have started to increase through the overnight. We've seen the temperature rising and these are the current temperatures as of recording at uh, what approximately 25 past 11 in the morning. We've got 15, 16 degrees on the Murray Coast as you can see here and uh, these are actually the warmest temperatures uh, in the UK which is quite interesting but not surprising given the fact that we've got uh, some fairly strong winds coming in uh, you know just ahead of this frontal system so we've got this uh, quite tight pressure gradient between the Atlantic and uh, and Europe here and it's, it's this orientation this kind of angle in which the frontal system is uh, is positioned that is key uh, and it's essentially tapping very, very warm air, of course, from the southwest all the way down to the Azores, right the way up into the British Isles. Now, remember a few factors here. We've got strong winds. The stronger the wind is blowing from the source to its destination, in a sense, the warmer the air mass can sometimes be because the faster you transport that uh, parcel of air uh, from a, a more southerly position of origin, up into the northern climes, uh, you're weakening that air mass uh, less as it gets shifted quickest. And, the, you know, all these factors have to be taken into consideration. Now, the winds are increasing to a uh, gale force, especially across coastal areas, but exposure, you're seeing very strong winds, but also very, very warm temperatures as well. These are the winds, and you can see here, um, as of six o'clock this morning, the, the focus of strongest winds was generally up the western side of both Ireland and Scotland, as you can see here. But as I play through the next 24 hours, we're going to see those winds increasing further. And the strongest winds are going to start to penetrate further inland here. And as those winds increase um, across the board, we're going to start to see the column warming up. So basically from 5,000 feet right down to the surface. You can see here as I play through this GFS loop, by the time we reach 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, temperatures widely, central belt all the way down to the south coast of England will be at plus 10 Celsius. And of course, when you've got strong winds and they're crossing over the top of those hills, downslope compression will warm and you're actually increasing the temperature as the winds descend the other side of these hills. So, uh, you know, potentially east of the Pennines, east of parts of the Welsh mountains, north the uh, Cumbria, around the Fells, southern uplands, the Grampians, the Cairngorms. Places downwind of that uh, could potentially be seeing some ridiculously warm temperatures. 16, 17, even 18 degrees, I believe, is not out of the question during the overnight coming up tonight. So the warmest air, the strongest winds are going to be moving in over the next 24 hours and tomorrow morning. We are likely to see uh, record-breaking uh, warm temperatures for overnight minimums, of course. Even during the daytime, 18, 19 degrees possible, even in Scotland, along that Murray coast where the winds are blowing over the Grampians here. So places such as Aboyne, Braemar, for example, may see um, you know, stupidly warm temperatures for the time of the year. Um, so interesting stuff. Uh, also... Uh, worth noting is the fact that we're going to see some very uh, significant rainfall up that northwest corner of Scotland. So Sky is going to get a, an absolute drench, and I think uh, parts of uh, Lewis and Harris as well, uh, you know, um, north and south east, uh, and up the western flank of the west coast of Scotland, we could be seeing uh, some pretty uh, significant rainfall totals. Uh, literally no rain, of course, down uh, across the bulk of England and Wales with the exceptions of uh, Snowdonia and uh, you know, Cumbria, for example. Um, so, yeah, um, of course, we've got uh, a very, very warm year to date. I want to make mention of the fact that we are seeing a very warm year, a very, very warm start to November. Interesting enough, it's actually been the wettest start to a November uh, on record, according to the, the BBC. It was actually a built-in um, uh, I watched last night, and it actually surprised me slightly. That, that was the case uh, it surprised me and it didn't surprise me if you if you know what i mean but uh, 
yeah, interesting the fact that we've had the weather start in November on record for the southeast of England. That is quite noteworthy. But what I want to make mention of is the fact that we've had, we've just held on to this warmth throughout the course of this year. Significant warmth. And of course, we've got a significantly warm North Atlantic. Now, my nagging feeling and, and concern more than feeling, my concern would be that this warm pattern kind of maintains itself. And it looks to me, bar some temporary shots of cold air, some teasers, if you will, we may struggle to shake this warm warm pattern overall, I think, uh, for the remainder of this year, possibly. I could be mistaken, and I hope I am mistaken about that. But just the fact that we've got incredible warmth just persistent. And you can see here, right, that we are receiving uh, cold into the middle altitude. So down into the United States, this is the, the GFS Ensemble, and we've got some significant cold drilling all the way down and fill in much of the United States, while Europe is extremely warm at the moment here. And it looks as if it's going to maintain extreme warmth uh, for the next wee while here. All the while, the United States is plunged into a mid-November freeze, uh, I suppose you could say, with significant snow likely with this type of weather pattern. And um, when you look at the... The North Atlantic Oscillation, it's it's reluctant. There's no real indication of anything negative in the t near term. The Arctic Oscillation, however, like I'm, I've made mention yesterday, is it's trying to go negative. And um, my concern would be that this European high maintains itself and, and, and kind of hangs around, if you will. And it's something that we need to consider and, and, and I need to consider with my winter forecast. Does that do we lose the the the, pre, the high pressure over Europe that we've seen much of this year? By the way, there's no getting away from that, especially from summer, and then of course you know we had this little blip during the second half of September, coldest since two thousand and twelve. We had a negative NEO, and that, you know that may return. And I'm I'm not dismissing anything, but I'm also putting everything on the table to show you. That there is pros there is also cons and those cons sometimes that nagging con has to be taken into consideration and not ignored and i've done that in the past i've thought well that's a con but it's going to be cold anyway and it turned out that that con ruled the winter you know even just take even last year for example so the negative arctic oscillation is 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 possible as we go towards the end of November into early December. And the reason why that would be possible would be the eastward uh, progression of the Manjulian Oscillation. We've got the tropics uh, alive and kicking. Um, and I will talk about the coal in the next video because that's making landfall in, in Florida. But, you know, possible negative Arctic Oscillation, but the reluctance of a negative NEO is, is slightly concerning. Now, if you look at the polar vortex, it looks as if it's in a really reasonably healthy mode. And as I play through this loop, what we're seeing is um, attempts at warming and disruption from uh, essentially the wrong sides of the pole at the moment. We're, we're seeing it from the Asia side. But you notice here that the core continues to, to strengthen. We're seeing temperatures minus 84. That's colder than normal for the time of the year within the, the, the stratospheric polar vortex. This kind of pushing south towards Greenland, North America and Europe is, is slightly concerning because if that was coupled down into the troposphere, essentially that would drive a, a positive North Atlantic oscillation. We would have more trophiness to the northwest of the UK, we would have more region Azores and Europe here and we would continue with that west the southwestly airflow into the British Isles. Warm and wet would remain the case if that polar vortex, number one, is coupled and number two, uh, the core of that is leaning closer towards us. Now, one thing I notice is that we're seeing cold shots coming into North America and there is indications that pieces of that polar vortex is trying to drop into, in, into North America. The concern that I would have would be 
does North America get a winter? Like we've seen in what 2013-14, where we have, you know, a stratospheric warming that essentially dumps Arctic air into North America, but then in turn leads to a stronger jet stream across the North Atlantic. So we have a negative AO, but a positive NAO. And the fact that the Atlantic is so warm at the moment, we could see an overriding warm pattern uh, right the way through. These are thoughts that I'm having to consider and I'm thinking about at the moment here. Certainly this warm pattern that we've got over Europe at the moment is, is getting harder to shift. It, it could be a simple flick of a switch and all of a sudden all things change and we could see the negative NAO and you know an 9 10 episode coming up who knows i can't i can't predict what the future holds but i'm i'm looking at all the different aspects and considering them cold coming into north america europe is flooded with warmth at the moment and uh, you know the behavior of, of what the the gfs ensemble is showing for the nao versus the ao what the polar vortex is predicted to do as well Sometimes you could su suggest that we, we, we see winter in the Northern Hemisphere, but it's on the North America side or it's on the Asia side. And it seems to be that it's becoming harder to get the cold dumped into both North America, Europe, and I suppose Eastern Asia as well. Um, with such a warm North Atlantic, you know, what do we, what do we get really this upcoming winter? So those are my thoughts this Thursday. And uh, I would appreciate it. Do drop a comment. Let me know what you think about what I'm talking about in today's video. And we shall continue to wait and see what happens. But certainly keep it right here on my channel. I do appreciate your, your view today. Please like, share with your friends and family. And if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Have a great day. Bye for now.